Awesome. I hope that all of you can hear us. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Tricia. <laughs> we have our Kleenex handy just in case. So we wanted to start just uh, in telling you a little bit about uh, what's prompted this conversation and a little bit about our connection and how uh, we know each other. Yep. So we know each other through yoga. We met in about 2007 um, through a yoga practice that we did. And Kelly was actually became one of my mentors in yoga. And then I started working at her yoga studio. Yeah. And I'm asking her because I don't remember the date. And that will come later on in the conversation to some of the things that uh, came into the delete zone of our memory banks as you're going through a lot of stress and a lot of things that help and some of the things that uh, didn't help. But yes, we knew each other through yoga and uh, I have always had a deep admiration for Trisha and who she is and her gifts and uh, being able to have a connection with her. And when I was diagnosed with cancer, she was one of the top people that showed up for me and showed up for our yoga community. And she taught my classes when I went into hibernation. And right now, where Trisha is on her journey, I'll let her kind of tell you where she is. Yeah. So basically, if you don't know already, I was diagnosed with um, stage four colorectal cancer uh, in May and started treatment uh, about four weeks ago now. And, oh, and I noticed it said something on the screen. Uh, and have gone through the first round of chemo and all the prep work that goes into that. And, um, and yeah, the journey has just, it's, it's interesting because um, this, is, this is kind of what prompted the conversations that we're about to have because people's expectations of how you're going to respond to your journey and, it, and their fear that they put into um, your your diagnosis mm -hmm. is um it's an it's very interesting and i i have chosen like kelly chose in her journey to show up with a positive attitude and a, a, a healer mindset and um we've been having conversations on zoom and 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 on facebook uh, messenger just about how, like, what's up in this moment of the journey. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's things that people don't talk about. You don't hear about the side effects of the treatments. Well, I guess you hear about some of them, but they're all bad. You don't mm -hmm. hear any, any of the, the, you know, like, I feel okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't have treatment this week. So I'm not on pain meds. I'm not on anti-nausea meds. Um, people are like, oh my God, you have to, you know, you, you're probably just always on something and I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, on these, I choose on these weeks that I don't have treatment to kind of detox my body and stay off of that stuff and kind of regulate again. Um, yeah. I think that that, uh, one of the first <laughs> things that Trisha and I started talking about too is when you have a diagnosis, whether it's cancer or for something else, and uh, you're, you've been on the healing path, and you've been doing your work, your internal work, and you have a pretty good sense of what your purpose is in life, and you're kind of going through the motions of living, I would say, a somewhat healthy and balanced lifestyle, how... Uh, you still are vulnerable to getting sick. It doesn't mean that you get uh, a pass on this, that if you live and you check off all the boxes to what it says, quote unquote, you're going to be healthy, that you don't get cancer, you don't get um, other kinds of sicknesses, illnesses, or diseases, because the truth is, is all of us can get it. And I remember that uh, 
when I first was diagnosed, there was so many questions from my family and friends. It's like, well, how the hell did you get it? <laughs> or, you know? or why you of all people? Right. I'm like, well, why not me? Why yeah. would you wish it on somebody else? <laughs> and that was a commonality that uh, I had when I was first diagnosed that Trisha also had. It's like, well, why not me? It's, it, it is a thing that there's no guarantees. And when you're humbled by the sense that, you know, we're all going to um, have our ups and downs on the journey and we're all going to die, you know? And that's another thing we'll, we can talk about later, maybe not in this session, but another one. It's like, even when you're talking to somebody that has cancer or has been through it, there is this uh, uh, kind yeah. of thing, like not even wanting to say the word die or death or cancer or anything like That's that. That's one conversation I actually, um, I scheduled an appointment with palliative care, which palliative care doesn't mean end of life. That's hospice. Palliative really, um, they take care of medications. They take care of the whole mind-body connection and the family. So they have services of um uh, that the family, you know, counseling and things like that, that you can partake in, um, social workers and such. But that was one of the things I had a social work or not a social worker, but a palliative care nurse, um, come in for a family meeting. And I got to tell them what my diagnosis meant, you know, basically my diagnosis from the experience of my care team um, doesn't have to be my experience <laughs> mm -hmm. because you know I do what I do and if I can get rid of this shit I'm getting rid of it but um, do you say a little bit more about like what that first when you were like uh, you're not on my team that aha oh, moment you yeah, had absolutely I had one uh, one oncologist uh, that it was the first oncologist that I saw and um, he basically told me that nobody that has my diagnosis survives. <coughs> Pardon me, I have a cough today. Um, and he, he said these words is, your chance of surviving this is nil. And um, yeah, and he basically said, because it has metastasized into your liver, that that means it, it says it didn't just pack a bag and go there, it went into your bloodstream. I'm like, well, duh. <laughs> and since it's in my bloodstream, it can land anywhere in my body. And okay, that's fine. Um, it has, well, we don't know if it has yet because it takes, get this, this is an interesting statistic. It takes over a billion cells to, for a, a tumor or a colony of disease to show up on a CT scan. It takes a billion cells. And so um, that's a lot of cells. So yeah. it, there's, you know, it can, it, it can, it can be anywhere. I am visualizing wellness in my entire body. Um, but literally when he said that to me and he said a few other things, and he walked out of the room to do something, and I looked at my people that were in the room, and I just said, I don't need this type of negativity in my life. Yeah. And they started laughing. I'm like, I'm serious. Yeah. I don't. This is not my journey right here. And um, so I got a second opinion at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, and always get a second opinion on something like this. Um, and sometimes a third. And sometimes a third. And, but, you know, with all of my research, I, I am so fortunate to be at Seattle Cancer Care. Um, my doctor is amazing, and the study I'm in uh, has had really good results. Um, and so, you know, it's, it is, <laughs> my new saying, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and never once has she said that I have a date stamp on my foot, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that is encouraging. They did have to classify it as incurable mm -hmm. to um, get my insurance to agree to have um, me go there. Um, but basically for the rest of my life, they tell me it's going to be a game of whack-a-mole. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to keep showing up in different areas of my body. And at some point I'll just get tired of fighting it. And I don't, 
I don't subscribe to that. It might it might happen. But isn't that life, right? But I, I don't know yeah. what I don't know yeah. the future, and I, I am not afraid of mm-hmm. of what's going on. What my body did last year is deplete, <coughs> sorry, um, of certain minerals, um, mostly antioxidants, and um, and it depleted my estrogen and my testosterone, which is also an interesting thing to me because then I went on hormone replacement. And I've always said that my body would do that for a reason and I never go on mm-hmm. replacement, but it made me feel good again, mm-hmm. you know? And so I wonder if my body wasn't telling me something just by depleting those. Um, one thing, and I know we all have our own um, uh, ideas and research about antioxidants and what we need to put in our body to fight cancer. Um, but one thing the oncologists and, and several of the care team have said is that the cancer cells, um, because they're a mutation, they also thrive with antioxidants, you know, and we're told, see it with antioxidants, you know, and, um, you know, people go on vitamin C regimens when they're on chemo and like massive doses. And it actually um, inhibits the the uptake of the chemo on the cells, and so um, I don't know. There's, there's a balance. There, there's a, a there is a balance. There's a natural food balance, and there's a if you're going to go holistic, go holistic. I think. I mean, I don't know. I'm going both mm-hmm. because that's what with the um, the realization that it's in my bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that I needed um, the Western side to push that down Mm -hmm. and to shrink the tumors and to hold it where it is or bring it to less so I can have the surgeries and all that stuff. And um, that's another topic. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it is. It's all a bit. And I think going back to what you were speaking about with the doctor, too, of, um, and I kind of get that chill when you were talking about. and remembering what he had said, and it wasn't a chill in what he was saying to her. It was just that uh, I want, I like that energy from his mindset of Trisha and how he saw her, and how how is that helpful? And I know there's like this balance of like you want to have a real somebody tell it to you real, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's this. Uh, this other energy that goes through it because this is what Trisha and I were talking about quite frequently and again today it's like she doesn't feel sick Mm -hmm. you know and when I was going through it um, I also balanced west uh, and east and uh, I had a western oncologist telling me you know do not be doing the vitamin infusions screw all of that we're going to destroy everything and then you can go in and clean up afterwards but please don't do them together and so these two worlds that uh you know we're so we're so connected to the holistic community that we so believe in both mind body and spirit and you know to bring those into balance and you know we're not here to say that what we're doing is right for anybody else, but this is what we knew inside that this was going to be how we were going to uh, work with it. I don't even, I still can't even say warrior through it. I still can't say I don't feel, fight cancer. Yeah. Maybe you're different. No, but. I feel, I feel it. I really honestly feel it's a journey of the soul. Yeah. And, um, oh, I just got chills. Mm-hmm. I love it when those happen. Um, but it is, it, 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 makes you look at every space, everything that you have done in your life. And, um, and one of, this is something that prompted these talks is, um, the outpouring of, for both of us, what we do in our healing is, um, we touch people's spirits and hearts and, um, and neither one of us before cancer, realized how much and the outpouring of story of how we've affected people or the outpouring of love and well wishes 
and so freaking humbling mm -hmm. because I'm always, I, I, I think with you too, um, always striving to create something bigger for the community, right? Always striving to make this big, huge impact worldwide, really, yeah. and, and never realizing that we have made an impact. And that's part of the healer journey. I think that's also part of the dis-ease. <clears throat> Yeah. Is that I remember having an epiphany uh, when I was going through treatment of, you know, I have been praying for so many different people and really trying to be a support for people in their healing path and realizing that I never in my own meditation sat in openly receiving the prayers that were coming my way. And so this thing of always out, always going bigger and, you know, never feeling like, and maybe this is a common uh, thing that we all share is that it's never enough, you know, and it's not, I won't even put good enough, but it's never enough. And I think a lot of us, uh, if not most of us at some point in time can really uh, relate to that. It's like, what you're doing in your life, uh, it has to go uh, full circle, right? It's like you give and then you also need to take those moments to receive because the receiving is what's going to keep us into balance. We can't keep on putting out, putting out, putting out. And then these daily acknowledgments through meditation, mindfulness, whatever that is to you, just sit back and realize that people really care about you and you've done a lot of amazing things in your life. And I'm speaking broadly to everyone. And I'm also saying that to myself because, you know, this many years out, it's almost eight years out right now for me. And this was again, part of this initial conversation that she and I were having. It's like, I forget on a daily basis. It's like, she's in the, the thick of newly diagnosed, doesn't feel sick, going through treatment, mm -hmm. having these epiphanies. She and I have talked about these things for many times through the years. And as I'm seeing my sister go through it, going, oh, shit, I forgot all about that. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not doing it every day. And that's why it's called a practice. So you've got to sit and, and evaluate, not from a enough state, but a place of like, oh, I, am I receiving? Am I taking those moments to listen inside and to be fed by the people that love me. And then uh, also discerning like those toxicities, toxin, toxicity, I can't even say it, toxic people, <laughs> toxic energies, you know, going back to what you were saying about this doctor, was he toxic? No, they have, he has his own gift and mad, magic. That's been his experience. That's been his experience. And then she gets to make a choice. And isn't that part of the life journey? It's like, you know, hopefully as we're practicing, we're clearing up some of these things, you can actually see it. Oh, wait a minute. This is not working for me. Maybe it does now or didn't before that kind of thing. Those discernments every day, what's working and what's not to bring you into balance, to live a life that feels really good to you and doesn't make you sick to the best of your ability. Yeah. Because there's still no guarantee, right? You can be the most positive person in the world and still get sick. And that's an interesting thing too, because as a healer and a positive mindset, a law of attraction, you know, person, I, I have fear around not being able to heal this mm -hmm. um, because I am the healer, right? And then the I'm not good enough rears its head. Mm -hmm. What if I'm not good enough? It's not the I'm not good enough. It's a what if I'm not good enough mm -hmm. to heal this. And then there's that inner da 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 da. And I shut myself up um, and check that when it comes up. I recognize it. I hear it. And and then I backfill that with the energy of feeling whole and healed. And um, I visualize seeing myself on stage on my book tour. <laughs> just so you know, it's just coming. So you know, it's coming. Um, and, uh, and just 
carrying from this experience, sharing with people the journey that mm -hmm. of, of cancer and the journey of always, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. The journey of, um, uh, oh God, <laughs> of God, of, of, of spirit, right? Of um, always knowing the energy of the universe, feeling the energy of the universe. And then um, those times when I'm not meditating, I'm not um, doing my yoga practice, I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, and feeling the disconnect. And then going, why am I so disconnected? Why am I so discombobulated? Because I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not doing my practice. I'm not being in that present moment. I feel like that what you're touching on too, uh, we were going to in this conversation talk about like what works and what doesn't work. And when I'm noticing things aren't working is usually when I don't have a routine in place that I can sit in self care, sit in meditation and kind of evaluate and I don't mean like from a heady place because that's not how I do evaluation. It's more like just a check in in the morning. And when I have these routine things going on in my life, I feel much better and I'm able to discern what's working for me now and what's not working for me now. Who is it and what is it that's going on in my life that I need to reevaluate or that I can actually go, man, you're doing it, you're doing it. And uh, this is helpful and this is not helpful, right? Like the, um, the energies that contribute to you feeling well and whole uh, in whatever and wherever you are in your life. I think evaluating, is it helpful? Is it not helpful? And it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. She and I, uh, Trish and I were just talking about before we went on too, is some of the projections that come uh, from other people's, place along their journey and please hear that this is not a judgment it's more like an observation um, mm -hmm. along the way when you have somebody like Trisha give an example and please uh, speak to this it's like she's not dead yet <laughs> <laughs> boom <laughs> right and so and sometimes we can't help it like that the first initial shock you know like when trisha first told me it's like and i just got another big chill it's like oh my gosh and the our fears can come up but we just counter us to the hot flash. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah you know they come up and it's like what what is this and uh and then time passes and you're you're kind of like okay so this is a wake-up call mm -hmm. wake-up call we have wake-up calls it doesn't have to be in the big form of the big c it can come in many different forms in fact it always is <coughs> in big forms. Yeah. but this whole thing of like being with somebody and just she is who she is right now the person that we've always loved and known and it's like my if i bring my fear to the table around her i need to keep that shit in check because it's not helping her yeah you know and being transparent wow okay and not expecting this goes another thing that happens in the cancer loop. And I think this is, I can speak to this personally, why I chose to barricade myself in mm -hmm. my process was because by nature, I want to make people feel better. I want to be, you know, as much as possible, help people on their journey, help uh, guide people. And I just couldn't help it. So when people, came into my life with, uh, 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 and I knew they meant so good and they really loved me. I wanted to make them feel better yeah. instead of going inside and uh, taking that time. I'm like, honey, it's time to make yourself feel really good and evaluate what's making you sick. And so for me, tucking away for a few months was helpful for Trisha you know, I think you're, you're in that, you're realizing, wait a minute, I can't just completely tuck away at right. Least right now. Well, part of, part of my thing that feeds me is my inner circle. I love the people that I have surrounded myself with throughout the last 
I, well, some some from you know almost forty years ago, mm -hmm. others in the last you know three years. But um, it's this cocoon of people that their presence in my life feeds me, mm -hmm. and they're helping me learn receiving, right? And um, and it's that fine line of time, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing all of these things to heal. And if I spend too much time visiting with somebody, then I'm tired and I don't have time to, I, I do have time. I don't want to do my yoga, mm -hmm. my meditations, my Qigong, my, you know, that, that type of thing. <clears throat> I've told some people that when they come over, you're doing Qigong with me. You're doing yoga with me. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're, if we're going to be in space together and um, we're, we're going to be in movement because it's really, what's a pain in my ass being sitting down all day talking mm -hmm. to people and um, <laughs> get my tumor. Then my <laughs> And here's, here's the interesting thing about where my tumors are also, is one is in my rectum, and that's the primary tumor, and that's all about letting shit go. Mm -hmm. Literally, for, um, for weeks, I couldn't poop, and um, that's how I found that I had cancer, as I went and had a colonoscopy. <clears throat> um, so oh, that go lightly will let you poop, though. Man. <laughs> um, not so light. Not so lightly. Um, and... The other one is in my liver. And what's really interesting about the liver is that's where in Chinese medicine, anger is stored. And, um, and so I, I look, I'm looking really deeply at, um, you know, those jealousies and, and things that flare my, my little triggers that I'm like, oh, why didn't they pick me? <laughs> you know, all those little monkey brain things that people seem to think since I have a mindset of, um, of positivity that that stuff doesn't happen. And it does. <coughs> the, difference, yeah. the difference about those things happening is I have learned to recognize in my own life and in my brain and my body what it feels like when they, when I've been triggered mm -hmm. and um, I am able to go, Oh, that's that little girl that didn't get picked for whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and then go, okay, I'm going to choose differently this time. It's not really about me. It's about the best person for the job, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, what someone saw in someone else. It's not that I'm less than, mm -hmm. um, but I still have those triggers. They've been embedded in me since childhood. And I work with uh, my friend, Michael Klein, who does a, a program called Regenerating Images and Memory. I read for short and I laughed uh, about that. But, <laughs> um, and that's all about re, um, like going through those experiences and changing the outcome. You don't necessarily, um, you get the ending that you want, mm -hmm. right? So it changes the feeling of the trigger, right? Um, very powerful work um, uh, created by a woman, uh, Deb Sandella. Uh, she is a fabulous being also. Um, but, um, where was I going with that? So with Michael, you just play the kids' key card. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's nothing to do with my brain. Oh, or anything like that. <laughs> you gotta play that card often, sister. <laughs> with the uh, the sessions with Michael, though, I've been able to go in and and really look at. The source of triggers and to reimagine them and mm -hmm. 
you know, one of them was an accident that we had as children that I, I felt so responsible for causing my sister to be hurt mm -hmm. in that accident. And um, I never realized that I was still holding on to that guilt of I actually fell out of the back of our pickup truck. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then my sister jumped out after me, lost her footing, hit her head on the tailgate and the ground and ended up in the hospital and several, you know, wow. several things happened. Um, and I felt extreme guilt because I'm the one that fell out, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it was an accident. And it was an accident. I yeah. had no control over what happened. I even talked to her after that session and she was like, shit, get over it. It wasn't about you. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's it just, you know, we hold on, we form um, responses, feelings uh, to certain situations at a very young age. And relearning that, um, you know, some people think that you can re, like, take those triggers out. I don't. I don't subscribe to that. I think those triggers are embedded in us for a reason. They're a safety net. But if they no longer serve us, mm -hmm. we need to, no, we don't need to. Um, in my experience, um, it is very healthy to feel, learn where those feelings show up in your body. And that's what I teach people. Mm -hmm. You know, where, where do you feel that in your body? What shape is it? What color? What density? What, you know, what about it is familiar so that when you are triggered and you feel that feeling, you're like, oh, this is that, this is that trigger from that. And I'm gonna choose to respond different. I like what you just said too, because that's what I feel like I'm learning. And again, like the practice of mindfulness through yoga, meditation, and being authentic and just like having conversations like what we're now, having is the ability to choose and mm -hmm. you know I think I spent a lot of years in the beginning uh, parts of my practice really analyzing the whys the wheres inside of my body inside of my psyche where I was carrying things the triggers um, and really learning different tools and becoming more skillful of how to work with them within me and then just uh, sharing my own experience. I will never pretend to have mastered any of this because I haven't mastered any of it. I have been able to choose though and use my skills and, uh, and my tools in a way that feels really good to me right now. And I would say uh, through the process of being sick for a while, being sick for a while, uh, because it's been, I think I ended out of my whole life I've been in some kind of chronic illness or yeah. something yeah. and uh, and now seeing it on the other end of like oh I get to choose you know it's like okay this is uh, coming up for me right now I like touch my breast with that as an example right it's like at that point in time of my life <laughs> I'm like mm. <laughs> what's, what's there not there energetically they're still there right I'm oh, sorry then. Yeah. <laughs> So looking at that, it's like, oh, you know, for I think the beginning stage of the journey, I really would have wanted to go in strong and deep of like, oh, and this is what I'm carrying it. And almost like in a, share, a shameful way, it's like, well, shit, you know? And when I was going through, it's like, that is just so not helpful. That is so not useful. It's like, yes, you can acknowledge that there are things that you carry within your body. And the more that you do a practice, a mindful practice, uh, the more you can kind of catch like your own suffering within that, yeah. whether or not you want to like stay and dwell in that room. And sometimes it's helpful to do that. And, you know, the use of a therapist or somebody that's very skillful in helping you navigate through that can be of great benefit. <laughs> and then there's also like this other stage of like, you know, where do you want to put your energy? And I think when you have a big diagnosis or a big trauma in your life, it's like this wake up. Wake up, how are you going to spend today? How are you going to spend the next hour? And is it like really uh, 
useful and helpful and is it moving towards your life purpose and some you know that's a pretty broad stroke right because i'd say most people at some point in time we probably asked ourselves what are you here to do yeah you know and what is that going to be a short duration we don't know i mean really i could go out and something could happen to me today and that would be it you that know but yeah i need you right now you stay here <laughs> It's a humbling thing. You're like, what are you going to do today? And Greg and I was were just talking about this yesterday. Uh, Greg Jamiel, who's an amazing, oh, yeah. uh, he's teaching right now. <laughs> but we're having that conversation. It's like, you know, when we do our practices, there is a, a check-in point that can help you navigate your day. And yes, you do want to have a big vision for your life. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is going a little bit off topic, but it also goes down to the nitty gritty and the minutia of what's happening right now in the moment. Are you going to choose to look at this as a positive thing? And I will share with you, one of the things that really pissed me off when I was first diagnosed is somebody within my community who I love and respect dearly uh, said, well, you know, honey, we're all cancering. And that like sent me spinning into all sorts of different FUs and uh, unhelpful things, but it is kind of true. I see that on the other end. We all have our diseases, and I think that's what genuinely she meant when she was offering that statement. And you know, if it's not this, it's going to be something else. That's life, you know. And I think that deeper spiritual teachings refer to that like as our sufferings. We get to see our suffering, and some times we get to choose what is going to be more helpful and not as helpful yeah. and sometimes things you just don't you know for whatever reason we were chosen absolutely i see it that way chosen <laughs> to go through this because we're very skillful and we, we touch a lot of people that's what i see i see that too yeah. and it's like and even just this conversation today it's like i hope that this is helpful to you you don't need to have a big wall up, a big funk on the head. It's always these little touches that we get of like, wake up, pay attention. And how can we be in community and be real with each other to, to improve the quality of our lives together? One of the things that you were saying is, you know, spending the time doing your practice and, and being in awareness and, and doing what you need to do in any given moment. And some days that is stepping on the yoga mat for me. Some days it's doing, you know, laying on my gem mat. Yeah, I'm bragging. And um, <laughs> this is gem mat. That is freaking <laughs> awesome. And, um, and some days it is a Netflix binge because that's what I got in me, you know, and my body just needs the rest. My mind needs the rest. And, and so I do, I rest. I just listen, listen to what's going on. And, um, yeah, and then, whoo, gone. <laughs> that's, that's all I got to say on that. <laughs> so, yeah, what else we got today? Well, what you were just saying too about the practice, uh, I too share in that. It's like I do an evaluation in the morning when I come in. It's like, what's going to be helpful today? You know, and it usually does involve spending a few minutes on the mat. And by the way, I don't spend like an hour and a half in yoga practice. <laughs> Usually my practice is probably 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but I do wake up. This was a big change uh, in my life of starting my day off with gratitude. Absolutely. I guess th soon, and those of you that know me, I, I talk about this all the time in my classes because it was probably the, one of the biggest golden nuggets of uh of the past eight years was when i know i'm awake i take a few deep breaths and just thank god thank god i get to be here another day thank the mother earth that i get to walk and feel uh where i live and all the beauty of nature the nature outside of me the nature inside of me i bring to my heart and mind all those people in my life and all of those beings in my life that 
are inspiring me and give them prayers. And then I also do continue regularly to uh, take in, I know somebody's praying for me and to really try to be mindful right from the moment I know I'm awake. Cause that's when your field is so open. Uh, right before you drop into sleep and right when you wake is when you are open the most to the universal energy. And that does help. It, it kind of sets the tone for the day. You know, I don't even know how many times, probably, you know, maybe three or four days that I've ever in my whole life woke up in a bad mood, like mentally in a bad mood. I've come up with worry before. Okay, I've done that more than three or four times. But it, <laughs> Usually, I just never got that. Like when people were like, don't talk to me in the morning. It's like I never understood that. So I've never had that in my constitution of who I am. Yet I also was never mindful of start your day with gratitude. Stay, start your day with giving thanks and the blessings of being able to be here and let it roll out, you know, as it goes. And I really do believe that that is help keep me well in my mind. You know, there that's kind of uh, uh, up for grabs on whether or not I'm well in my mind, but. <laughs> You're well enough for me. <laughs> With the just the right amount of uh, sass. <laughs> sass and Hit vinegar and sass. <laughs> Stir it up. Authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's. Authenticity is what a lot of people refer to as hidden vinegar. <laughs> yeah, just to like, you know, to keep it real and to be there for each other and to count your blessings because I really do believe uh, there's way more good energies in this world than there are negative energies in this world. And so, you know, these wake up calls that we're getting to feed into, you know, what you were referring to, uh, that path of wellness to keep you up and alive and feeling good and on purpose mm -hmm. is super freaking important. Yeah. And so um, right now, just to be really mindful of it and to keep reminding each other that like, hey, sister, come on back on, you know, and it's not to say that she's not going to have those crappy, cranky days or moments. And it's like, yeah, that's a part of it, too. And those are the days I don't I, I can look at my chemo schedule and know now which days I'm not going to want to see people. Yeah. I have a what I call my babysitter that comes in those days, and it's a different person who's been there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, just to make sure that my needs are met, because I know I'm going to feel crappy on those two days. Yeah. Right? And um, I don't know where I was going on that. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that you're speaking of, too, and I kind of, like, heard it as you were just speaking, mm -hmm. Like, if we can just get this in our life, whether or not you have a diagnosis or not, yeah, it's like when you're having a crappy day that you reach out to somebody that's going to help or be of help. Or maybe it is a day that you want to tuck in and do more of your practice. Yeah, It's like these things that they're highlighted certainly for you right now. You know, and it's certainly in those points in time in my life, like I see them. They just keep coming up, and it doesn't doesn't ever go it doesn't away. Go away. It's a, that's why they call it practice. Yeah, you know? yeah. Our life is a freaking practice. Yeah. It's not. It, it's ever changing. That you know, it's a constant. Is change. That's yeah. the one constant. Well, two. We're all everything's changing, and we're all gonna die at some point. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I think that's. That was a conversation that we started earlier and it got sidetracked is, is just death. Welcome to Conversations with Kelly and Trisha. <laughs> we, we do eventually we come back, back to around. <laughs> and, um, but death, right? When I was talking about the palliative care thing, I got to tell my family that um, I, I felt badly because every time I brought up the subject of death, because I'm a planner, I'm, I strategically like have to have, and this is something I'm, I'm journeying through. I am, my calendar, my schedule is like, I live by it. Mm -hmm. And this has taken my schedule and just kind of 
<laughs> <laughs> and um, every week my my appointments shift. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be there at 7:15, and then I'm there at I'm supposed to be there at 10. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why they shift my schedule? You know, I, and it's not it's not about me. It's what they need to get me in. Um, Don't take that personally. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things is um, I genuinely in my soul know that when I leave this plane that my energy goes back to a source and and um, and it's not even that it goes back to a source. It just because it's already connected in, in in my belief system and I am not afraid of dying. Mm-hmm. What makes me tear is the people that I leave behind mm-hmm. when I go. Mm-hmm. And I've said that to my family now. And they, because there was a third party there, you know, they had, they, they listened. They didn't like stop me. Anytime I've said, I'm not afraid of dying, don't even talk about that. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I kind of need to talk about it. Yeah. Because it's my reality right now. I could. I could. And so I need to talk about it. And I'm sorry that makes me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Not sorry. I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Especially with your new money here. She's got a third nipple. <laughs> yeah. where they put um, any blood draw, you know, they access it here and um, put blood draw and infusion goes in there, everything else. And what, what the joke was is, you know, I'm, I'm so, um, you know, <laughs> well, well down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> that the joke was that when, um, when they put it in, I wish I knew that it was going to bump out like that. I would have had a place <laughs> a little bit lower to augment the right <laughs> I need to brag about it. <laughs> and then I was joking that I'm just gonna have a little nipple to like put on this. Yeah. But with the access, like the more it gets access, it's getting a scar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to like a nipple. Up. So anyway, I digress. So where, where <laughs> so were you going with that? I was going with death, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. and so I and it's it's an interesting thing because people are so uncomfortable talking about death and it's it's a right, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, yeah, it is. we it's all do it. And, and I think in ancient cultures, we had ritual around death mm-hmm. and in, in our Western culture and I, some cultures still have, um, in our Western culture, a lot of us don't have any rituals around death. We have fear mm-hmm. that's been instilled in us around death, um, because we are so disconnected. Right. Yeah. And well, we um, haven't been mentored through it. We haven't. You know, yeah. I, I find it fascinating, you know, Karen Harold, mm-hmm. um, she is one of my best friends and she uh, uh, went through death doula training. And mm-hmm. I think that's just, I know a few people that have done that now. Yeah. Um, and so people can pass gracefully, mm-hmm. right? And with and dignity. With dignity. And, yeah. and, and their own wishes carry out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I think about that. That's, I don't know if that's what my experience is. My experience with my my heart and soul is so. Um, <laughs> sorry, I have. And for those that don't know, I had a, a collapsed lung uh, two weeks mm-hmm. two weeks ago, and um, some of the the inflammation is still hanging on. So I have this wonderful little cough. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, the oh now I've lost my train of thought I guess just coming back to death and what you're realizing uh, about, around the fear around the, that's around, held around, around it yeah. around that and um and and then I can talk about my own death but I I'm not, not really interested in in that side of the death mm-hmm. for myself um I I am so interested in making people um not not making helping people um in the active phase of life, <laughs> yeah. um, mm-hmm. realize their potential. And, and that's not even in a, in a creating success necessarily, but creating an energy within that is powerful and beautiful 
and that you know you are enough, mm -hmm. right? And I know that comes from my own journey of not feeling enough mm -hmm. my whole life. And I don't, I don't feel that anymore. Yeah. I don't feel that anymore. <laughs> I think that that's a helpful thing too. There was that song, Live Like You're Dying. Yeah. And I remember when I first heard that, I thought that is such a powerful mantra because it really, it's like you, you were here for a very short amount of time and I feel like that that is something that can be helpful for all of us. It's like, we don't know when we're going to go and to talk about our fears around it because they are real for, uh, for most of us, you know, there's some parts of it can be really scary. And a lot of it, uh, we, it's kind of like cancer and being, um, being really transparent about like the journey with, which Trisha is being, very open and I'm super grateful for that. And I know I've chosen to be really grateful and uh, to be transparent as well as I've been coming through this is to really not take it for granted. You know, I don't know how long we're going to be here and uh, to just keep this conversation going. And I think this is probably a good point for us to, um, <laughs> yeah, to end the conversation today, this is going to be something that is an ongoing conversation. And if you have uh, any requests or any comments or anything that um, that you'd like to kind of get in, in, <laughs> how does I get in bed with us? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you come in on my lap. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I, I really feel like this is super important, yeah. you know, and, um, yeah, thank you. And I hope that this recording comes out really well. I'll be posting this up on Namastream. So those of you that are on the Two Rivers Yoga online, it will be uh, housed there, but it's also going to be up on our Facebook pa uh, pages so you can access it there. And comments, welcome, like I was just saying. Yeah. And on my end of that, I'm my intention prior to diagnosis was to open my own mama stream studio, which you know, and, um, and so with that and these conversations, um, and the people that I'm still coaching and how much I get fed by that, uh, I've decided to just go ahead and open my studio awesome. online. And so these recordings will also be able to be there and, um, mm -hmm so we can have more of a, a broad platform for them because uh, they're important. Yeah. If you don't know what Namastream is, Namastream is just a <laughs> housing unit for videos basically. Yeah. And you can do a lot with it. And it's been a platform um, that was invented by these two amazing women, one from Canada, one from here in Washington. And uh, I really, I like to support other women that are in um in that healing realm and that are just doing it. They're just going for it. So that's what that platform is. It's and an amazing platform. Yeah, they it put really a lot is. of fun into it. Yeah, yeah. So. And if you're not on Kelly's Namastream to her <laughs> studio, <laughs> she teaches on their live Mondays at noon yeah. and Friday at 6.30 in the morning. You'll usually catch me on there. This morning yeah. time got away from me. I looked at the clock, I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, but all the videos that she does on there are then recorded and there's this whole library that you can go in and do a 45 minute practice anytime you want. And it's amazing. I love that. I'm so grateful that you have done that. And that's a, that platform <coughs> um, was specifically as a supplement. It's a supplement to your yoga classes. Mm -hmm. It's a, also away, you know, Trisha lives in Covington. So she's, you know, she's a good 45 minutes away and that I can practice with my friends, quite honestly, yeah. I can do that. And then I can also record it for people that don't have access. And so it's another plug for that, uh, that community, because I really believe that we all need each other. And as creative as all of us can be together to create access and mindfulness for everyone i think is super important absolutely yeah yeah absolutely. yeah gratitude for you yeah. gratitude thank for you thanks you. for showing up today yeah. and again please let us know if there's 
anything that you want us to talk about, <laughs> toilet paper, <laughs> or anything resonates with you. We didn't cry today. We must not be done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Mwah.